It is a pleasure to have you all here. I want to thank the partners, I want to thank the guests, and I most of all want to thank the grantees who make us all realize tonight why we do what we do. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. I also want to take a moment to highlight some of the important investments that we've made in SB2 to make this partnership stronger and to grow our impact in the community. And it's part of that impact that we see tonight, but we're going to feel in the crowd around us. I also know I'm the only thing standing between you and dessert and coffee, so I will try and be brief in my remarks. Um, SB2 is really about four things. We are about investing in and engaging with exceptional nonprofits. That's obvious. We also are about educating and empowering the SB2 partners to become more strategic and more collaborative in their own philanthropy. We also collaborate with networks, other funders, other service providers, those who can impact the work we're doing and our grantees are doing. And fourth and most important, we have fun. <laughs> That's why we do the convening we have tonight. That's why we have First Friday events, we have education events. The fun part is an obvious part of what we do. And I like to think of Bill Somerville, a philanthropic ventures foundation, who says philanthropy should be significant, strategic, and satisfying, and fun. And that really does infuse all we do. We have a great calendar of events to keep people engaged, and we are always willing to look for more things to do. The grantee part, it's obvious. I mean, you just heard from four of them. There are so many more in the room tonight that tell incredible stories of changing the organization, changing the, the social and environmental areas where they support. Um, and each SB2 grantee does two really profound things. They inspire and they connect. Each has a vision for deep social or environmental change, and they articulate a compelling solution to that problem. They instill a sense of urgency that compels others to action. But they operate in an interconnected world where there are many players. There are clients, there are governments, there are service providers, educational institutions, all of whom must be recruited and aligned in order to achieve their audacious goals. I was so inspired to hear Eric's talk about Opportunity Fund and how they have enabled clients to start their own businesses and build economic security for their families and their communities. My own philanthropic journey was deeply influenced on a 2007 trip to India where we witnessed microfinance in action. SB2 board member Wendy Lee was with me on that trip as are two of our guests, Nancy Duarte and Carol Mills. We witnessed the power that $40 and $60 loans could make in the outcomes of women in very poor areas. And as we watched the celebration these women brought to the work, it was like a gospel choir as they clapped and sang and celebrated their support of each other and the work they were able to bring to their families. But I thought at the time microfinance was a tool only for India and Bangladesh, and it was Opportunity Fund that helped me understand the importance of this tool in the local communities that we endeavor to serve with our own work. Opportunity Fund is also a success, is a testament to the SB2 power, and I think Eric has said better than anyone what it meant to engage with our partners deeply and to marry the investment with the partner advising. Um, Early faith is an important factor in the trajectory of an organization, and I think Eric has spoken to that. So I'm going to go back to me for a moment, because there was another thing on this trip to India. I got a glimpse of the power that mobile technologies could have in developing worlds. We drove by a village that only had a well for water, and there were three women pulling water out of the well with their buckets, and each of them was talking on a cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> Josh Nesbitt grabbed at the potential of the rapid dissemination of mobile communications in developing countries and created InMedic Mobile, an amazing organization that provides critical health services to underserved communities in Africa, Asia, and in Latin America, and now the U.S. My son Michael works on an organic farm. He's with us tonight before he starts college. So I am delighted that our newest grantee in the environment round is Pi Ranch 
Pine Ranch has an education and advocacy and an apprenticeship platform that promotes farmers, land conservation groups, policymakers, and educators to share a common understanding of what it takes to be successful as a farmer and the importance of sustainable agriculture. We're two college kids, big tuition bills, but we also find it heartbreaking as parents to think of so many low-income kids falling into that gap. And as Alex told us tonight, Beyond 12 is providing a critical data and services bridge that fills this gap between high schools and the college communities so that no child is left without the support required to get them through the academic, the financial, and the social challenges of college. These are profound social changes that require connecting, aligning multiple parties with multiple agendas and helping them arrive at a common understanding of the desired outcome, how to achieve it, and how to measure it. This concept has resonated with a lot of the SB2 partners who are participating in a collective impact initiative in education, which does bring me to the partners. SB2's goal is to meet partners wherever they are on their philanthropic journey and inspire them with experiences and education that empower them to be more strategic, more collaborative, and more fulfilled by their giving. When I joined SB2, I was a recovering corporate lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> I have learned so much from the SB2 partners who all freely share their experiences, their expertise. They offer opportunities to learn when they're on the grant rounds, when they're on the advising teams, when they join the board of SV2, when they join the board of some of our grantees, they are always incredibly generous with their time, their talent, as well as the treasure they donate to SV2. And tonight we do celebrate a truly inspirational partner in Laura Lauder. She does embody the generosity, <coughs> the intelligence, humility, and grace that I could only aspire to. In the board meetings, she asks important and hard questions, but always in a supportive atmosphere. When Laura talks, I definitely listen. <laughs> so Laura, we celebrate with you a so well-earned SV2 Social Impact Award, and thank you for the impact on SV2 and the impact you've had on me. As part of our work with grantees, these exceptional nonprofits, we make them go through a rigorous process where they have to assess their own organizational capacity. Well, here's one of the other things I love about SV2. We eat our own dog food. We put ourselves through a rigorous organizational capacity assessment. We surveyed our partners repeatedly, and I thank all of you who participated. We really do listen, and we consulted with experts. And we made some investments in SV2 that we think are going to enhance our capacity as a grant-making organization and as a great source for our partners to engage deeper and more profoundly in their communities. It turns out our mighty staff of two was not enough to meet the needs of partners who expect to learn more and do more to meet the needs of the communities. So in the last year, we invested in our grant-making capacity by hiring Lisa Downey, as our extraordinary grant manager and advising team manager. Our increased staff capacity allows our exceptional leader, Lindsay Louie, to be more effective in addressing strategy, looking at partner development, and looking at all of the ways we can expand our relationships with the greater community while she was having her second baby. <laughs> Holly Goodliffe's communication outreach efforts address our strategic priority of increasing the SV2 brand awareness. And I would love a round of applause for Lindsay, Lisa, and Holly, as well as Dwight Hobbs, our AmeriCorps volunteer, who have all been here. But wait, there's more. In response to strong partner interest, SB2 is adding health as a grant-making focus this year. A, a fantastic partner team, Kathy Somanowitz and Eric Wong, will lead the health group. 
We haven't had a new grant making focus in several years and we're excited to see how this addition helps us engage even more partners and make a difference in the health landscape in our local communities. But we see matters of health as critically intertwined with successful educational outcomes, environmental impact, and international development. So it will be interesting to see the possible synergies between the new health group's work and our other grant making groups. And there's one more thing, home sweet home. We have our very own first office. No one up here cannot thank Mark Parnes, and we thank him for, and Wilson Sonsini for 14 years of temporary housing. But it was time for a place of our own. And using the Stanford Design School principles, but sticking to a nonprofit's budget, we have a space intended to encourage interaction and creative problem solving by partners, grantees, and the networks we engage with. Please join us for our open house on the first Friday of October. Stop by any time to see it. We are so excited to be there and we can't wait to show it off. So we believe these investments in staff, facilities, and our grant making will increase our own organizational capacity to grow the partnership and to scale the impact of SB2 in our communities. But just as each SB2 grantee inspires action and connects the systems and people needed for systemic change, each SB2 partner inspires and connects other philanthropists, family members, and their personal networks for deeper, larger impact. We know the needs of our community are great and urgent there's much to be done, and available resources are scarce or inefficiently deployed. The problems we address in education, the environment, international development, and now healthcare are hard. But as a wise friend told me, Nancy, if it were easy, it would have been done by now. We are persistent and creative. We know the work we're doing is significant and satisfying. And now it's time to get back to the fun. So please join us for dessert and coffee, and thank you all for being with us tonight.